Hi, my name's Trinity, and today we're going to be talking about making the best of a bad situation. To begin with, let's just talk a little bit about the situation itself. Right now, we have people that are risking their lives to save the lives of others. Meanwhile, we have individuals that are showing up to courthouses and town squares with semi-automatic rifles, claiming that their rights are being violated by the very measures that have been put in place to protect the public health. These individuals are not facing off against soldiers in a street. They are not being threatened. There is no gun being pointed in their faces. But they are perfectly willing to use those guns as an intimidation tactic when they show up at these protests. Counter protests have been taking place where brave medical workers are standing up to these people, standing in front of them in peaceful protest to say that the virus is real, the situation is real, the lives that have been lost are real. The people that are currently protesting the public health measures that have been put into place, they will take any excuse they can get to avoid taking responsibility for protecting the more vulnerable members of our society. They cherry pick data and then use that data in an out of context way to try and say that this is basically just a bad cold. It is not just a bad cold. Doctors and nurses from all over the world have come together to plead with people to tell them that this is unlike anything they have ever seen. The virus has already killed 50,000 people in the United States in only seven weeks. 200,000 have died globally in just three months. The virus has not yet had time to spread to the kind of numbers that you see in the flu and flu season. However, it has killed so far in the U.S. alone in seven weeks twice as many as this past flu season. They claim that because more individuals have actually been infected with the virus than have been reported, that the mortality rate is much lower. Unfortunately, what they failed to do is calculate the fact that that is exactly the same case with the flu numbers. The mortality rates and the comparisons that we give using official numbers are important because they allow us to have context and comparison. If you're going to find every single person who has been infected with the virus, then you have to do the same for the flu. If you don't, you will not get an accurate representation of how much more lethal one virus is than another. Most people have never even been tested for the flu, even though they go into the doctor's offices many times over the course of their life with flu-like illness. The good news is we have an opportunity to take the flaws and weaknesses we see and fix them. We are not helpless in this situation. We have the opportunity to create a better world and a better life for ourselves and our communities. The things that you are going to see me unboxing today are tools, many tools that I will be using to do this for myself. And I hope that by sharing them with you, it will make you feel like you have some kind of control over this situation, help you to understand that we're not helpless, and it's not hopeless. This is not going to be easy, but we owe it to ourselves and the people who are willing to give their lives for us to make the absolute best of this situation that we can. So we're going to open some boxes, take a look at some supplies, talk about what they're for, and I hope that this will be able to help people feel more in control and like they have some way to help fight in this situation. First thing here, um, it's already been unboxed, but it is a scale, just a cheap, simple bathroom scale. One of the big health risks that leads to risk from the virus causing complications is obesity. I myself started on a weight loss journey as soon as I found out about the risk factors for the situation, and I needed the scale to find out where I'm at. Um, I will make videos specifically about my weight loss journey and what's going on. Um, I have hypothyroidism, so losing weight is very difficult for me, but so far uh, I've been able to kind of work out a plan, and I will definitely share the specifics of that in another video. But for right now, we're just kind of going over uh, the specific tools and what they're for. Door hinges. Um, as some of you may know who've been watching some of my videos, uh, my husband and I, we live in a very, very rundown trailer. Um, I've said before uh, that at some point I'll get into this story about how we wound up in this situation. Um, but for right now, what you need to know is 
all of the internal doors in the house. Um, when we moved in, the previous occupants had ripped them completely out of the door frames. We never even found what they did with the actual doors. So right now, my husband and I are doing construction to repair the house, and that includes doors. Here we have black zip ties. These were bought to attach the um, chicken wire fencing to the pressure treat posts that we're putting down into the ground. We're building a very large fencing area for the chickens um, as well as for my garden itself. So that is what these are for. Building a garden, raising chicks, these are things that can help protect the supply chain that is very, very much under threat right now. Um, food workers all over the world and in this country are having to shut down plants ever since especially we found out that animals are capable of carrying the virus. Um, it's obviously and naturally become a center and a vector for illness, um, especially meat packing plants. The workers are crammed in there with these animals and they are working in a very unsanitary situation with blood and fluids all over the place so naturally it's become a vector and there are many plants that have had to shut down um, on the other side of that you have the farm workers a good amount of america's farm workers are actually migrant farm workers and given the fact that our country currently has the highest rate of infection in the world and the largest number of casualties combined with the way that many people in this country feel about migrant workers, you can kind of see that they may not want to risk it coming across the border to get paid pennies on the dollar to work back-breaking labor, putting their lives at risk, especially knowing that they are not appreciated and not very well liked in this country. I'm not going to take this out of the box because you can see what it is, but it is a, a, a printer. <laughs> it's a printer. Um, I am now obviously working from home. Um, I'm building this YouTube channel. I've built a website. Um, I've built social media platforms with the intention of researching and getting good information to people um, about all kinds of aspects from infection prevention to emergency preparation stuff. Um, as this situation seems that it's going to be continuing for quite some time, I'm going to continue working on those things. So for the foreseeable future, it's not really going to be safe for me to go back to work as an Uber driver, um, especially with my chronic health conditions. So I'm building a home office and I'm going to continue to look for ways that I can um, earn money at home and continue to work on the things that I'm doing for the website, this channel, and on social media to help people feel like they're better prepared for the situation that they're in. This is a compressed hay bale. You'd actually be really surprised at how heavy this is. This is what looks like a really tiny package. This is an entire bale of hay that's been completely vacuum sealed down. Um, so this is going to be used for the bedding for the chickens and eventually lining their nest boxes when they get older. Um, but it was the safest way for us to get a bale of hay was to just order it. This is a sawzall. This is really important because my husband and I, we were not planning on staying in the house that we're currently in. Um, we were actually planning to be gone this spring. Um, and then obviously, like for so many people, plans change. So we need the tools to be able to do the repairs here that absolutely have to be made for us to be in a safe environment. So, salt's all. Salt's are going to come in handy with building farm structures on the property. This is a heater. Um, as I said in the previous video, uh, another problem with the place that we're currently living, um, there is no furnace system here. Uh, we have to heat the house with electric uh, heaters throughout the winter, and living in Vermont, it is a very long and a very, very cold winter. So, <clears throat> we needed another heater. It also is going to be really good for helping to keep the room temperature up um, for the chicks that I'm brooding inside here in the house. Uh, all of our other heaters were very, very, very old and not necessarily reliable. So, a new heater. 
Okay, next item. Work goggles. Oh, okay. These are sanding discs that we can use with our power drill to be able to sand some of the edges of the wood um, and the surfaces of the things that we're currently constructing. These are extra thermometers um, that can be used to tell the temperature of the area that the chicks are in as well as to double check temperatures in incubators as I'm probably going to continue uh, as I'm able to get access to fertilized eggs. I'm probably going to continue to rear and brood some chicks and I want to get them out to people that are having a difficult time finding chicks to raise of their own. Fiber supplements, a uh, big part of being in the best health you can be is making sure that your diet is giving you all the things that you need. Given the fact that we are getting so many um, items that are non-perishable, they can really lack in some of the major vital things we need, such as protein, um, such as vitamins, minerals, which we have vitamins for that, calcium, and in this case, fiber. So, my camera uh, apparently ran out of battery charge, so luckily we were almost done unboxing stuff anyway. Um, so I just, I guess I'll just kind of wrap this up. The entire point of this video has been that we are in a terrible situation, but we have the opportunity to do things to make the best of that situation and in fact come out stronger, healthier, and better people than we were when we went in. Only a fool can see weaknesses and flaws in themselves and in the world around them, have them revealed to them and then choose to ignore them. And that's something that we really need to make sure we aren't doing. Don't be afraid to acknowledge weakness in yourself or things that you need to work on. Be afraid of not being able to improve yourself. I don't ever want to go back to normal. Normal was not so great for me. Um, I don't want to get into heavy details about my past or about my past effects on me, um, but let's just say I went through some really difficult things and it had taken a toll on me. This situation has woken me up. It has made me realize that I am a lot stronger than I thought I was and it's also brought to my attention areas of myself where I had weaknesses that I previously had not been aware of. I am actually less depressed and less anxious than I have ever been in my life as I work, you know, from the time I wake up to the time I go to bed, every single day I feel motivated to do it, every single day I feel like I'm being productive, I feel like I'm accomplishing something. Um, everything from the planting food to hatching and raising new chicks to teaching other people to do these things, research on infection control, mask making, uh, just, there's so many things that I, I'm doing right now and so many skills that I'm gaining that I didn't previously have. And I look at some of these things and I think to myself, you know, would I have ever learned these things if I had not been put in this situation? What if I'd been put in a more, even more dire situation and had not had these skills, had not realized these things I didn't know and these weaknesses about myself and I hadn't addressed them? Again, we have an opportunity, and I think that we have a responsibility to make the absolute best out of this situation. Otherwise, all we have is a terrible tragedy with thousands and thousands and thousands of people dead. And to me, that's, that's just not acceptable. We need to make something out of this. We need to learn something out of this. We need to grow as people and grow as a civilization. And I hope that my small contribution through my work and the things that I do can help other people to be able to do that too. So that's kind of the point. That's the point of this entire video. Um, you can find all of my work and all of my guides on my website, www.trinitysurvivor.com. 
Um, I have videos, if you're new to my channel, on hatching chicks and on me starting a garden. Um, more are going to be coming as I continue to work and learn new skills. Um, if you would like to support the channel, I'm going to put the link to my Patreon down below. I understand that everybody is in financial difficulties right now, so please take care of your own family first. Don't worry about me. Um, but if you can and you want to donate, I'll have the link below. I'll also put all of my social contacts down there. So, if you liked the video, like, share, subscribe, all the fun stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.